When it comes to putting together a gaming PC with some of the best price performance, as well as not breaking the budget of say 400 US dollars, which is what today's gaming PC is going to do, I usually come in with these builds that use a lot of used parts and I get a lot of complaints in the comments section about people saying that they just can't replicate the deals that I can get or there's simply no deals in their area on the used market or they're just not comfortable buying used parts off the market where they got no recourse. Though today's gaming PC build changes all that, we're gonna be using parts that are readily available on the market, meaning that anyone can get them shipped to their door and there's actually plenty of stock from the listings that I check on these parts that I'm using here today. And so it makes it that today's bill's not just gonna be pretty good value for money, but it is also gonna be something that a lot of people can build. And I'll put all the links in the description below, but let's get onto the main parts in today's build that are just absolutely ripper value in terms of price performance. And as I'm talking about these parts, I'll also show some build footage of me putting it together. So if you wanna replicate the build and you maybe it's your first time building a gaming PC, then you can just follow the footage and it should be really easy to do. Now, the first part that we're using here is a Xeon and an X99 motherboard combo that also includes two sticks of DDR4 memory. So you're getting 16 gigabytes of RAM, you're getting a motherboard and you're getting a Xeon 2680V4, which is 14 cores and 28 threads. Now, although it does have pretty low relative clock speeds, especially versus some of these latest and greatest CPUs that cost 20 times as much, it does have one advantage, and that is it's got a lot of level three cache, which is great for gaming, especially popular online multiplayer titles, which we'll be testing a couple of those in today's video. Now this bill will come under $400 and I've even included the Windows license in the cost, which I'll show you guys how to activate later on in the video with today's video sponsor, but more on that later. In this particular instance, we are using the ICE 200 Pro, very budget cooler, great for cooling 55 watts, especially while we're either doing strenuous tasks or we're gaming and it's gonna be really quiet as well as have a bit of RGB bling to boot. Then for the SSD, we're going with the 500 gigabyte SSD M.2 NVMe because this motherboard does take advantage of resizable bar, which does help with gaming performance in some titles. It's a great little bonus there and 500 gigabytes should be enough space on a little budget like we've got here today. Now, one thing about this motherboard is it does come shipped with no little circular battery. They are the CR2032 batteries. If you don't have one lying around in your house, Put the link in the description below where you can get one from, but they're usually like a dollar at best, even from your local thrift store. So with this combo all assembled and ready to go, it's time to look at the most important part of today's build, and that is the graphics card. And here is where we are using the RX 5700 XT 8 gigabyte. This in terms of price performance is really good. Now, in terms of what you can get this for shipped to your door, it's a little over $170 at this point in time. But keep in mind, you can, if you're a bit adventurous, can save a lot of money on the used market. If you can pick one up locally, even for an even cheaper price, then I do personally recommend going that route. I do save a lot of money by getting local deals. But even then, at a little over $170, this is gonna give us some great price performance for today's build. And then for the power supply, because our CPU is not using a whole lot of power, we can actually get away with even a 400 watt power supply. But for those who want peace of mind, I have recommended using a 500 watt power supply, even though in today's video, I'm gonna use a 400 watt power supply with a pretty power hungry 5700 XT to show that at this kind of spec, it's not that important as long as you get a decent, in this case, we've got a Silverstone 80 plus power supply. It's not that important to stress about getting a really high end power supply on this budget. So of course, for the last component in today's build, we have the case. Now, if you are really on a budget and you just want the best price performance, you actually don't even have to use a case, but of course it is recommended to have airflow as well as just protecting your PC components. And here's where we've gone with personally a Silverstone Farrah. This comes loaded with four fans. And on Amazon, for instance, you can get a lot of different options. Where I am locally, this is one of the best value cases I could get. On Amazon, I think there's some four fan solutions that go for around $55. And so one of these cases will do absolutely fine with the components that we're using here today. Now, in terms of putting this whole build together, it's a very simple process of putting the power supply in, then putting the motherboard in, and then after that, connecting all your cables and then putting in the graphics card last. As well as we saw earlier, we were prepping the motherboard, putting the M.2 into the motherboard, the RAM, getting the CPU right, as well as inserting the cooler on top. But of course, always don't forget to put your IO shield in 
before you put your motherboard in the case. With that aside, let's go check out this PC, boot it up, and then see what we can do with it. So now that we have finished this budget PC, we can see here it's not just a price performance mogul, it's also a pretty decent looking system. So we just have the best of both worlds, especially for under 400 bucks, but there's still a few steps we have to do before we can jump into games and see how this thing performs. And that is, especially if it's your first time building a PC, you'll want to get Windows installed. Now for today's build, we were going with Windows 10 install. Very easy to do, especially if you wanna go with an enterprise install, which is essentially, I call it a bloat free Windows 10, or you can get Windows 11, it's a little bit more expensive, but the Windows 10 version we're going with this today, where you can get activated with today's video sponsor, VIP SCD keys for as little as $13, actually slightly under, if you use that link in the description below as well as that coupon code BFTYC. Now they've got all the popular methods for payment and once you've paid, you pretty much get your key instantly. You can just copy that and then paste it into the activation section of Windows and then you are good to go. But also if you don't like Windows 10, for instance, you wanna go with 11, they've got all the different versions there. So I'll put all the links in the description below and it's just so easy and inexpensive to get Windows activated nowadays, especially with today's video sponsor. But you may not be finished there, if you don't know how to get the install going, I'll put the links for the image files in the description below, where you just download the particular image you want to install, whether it's Windows 10 Enterprise, or Windows 11, Home, or Pro, and then you get a program called Rufus, and then also an eight gigabyte or bigger USB flash drive. Plug that into the PC, another PC, and then also get Rufus, get that image file, load it in, go through the steps. I personally tick all the boxes upon creation, as it speeds things up. And I also don't like having TPM and secure boot requisites on my OS drive. And the reason for that is if I wanna use that drive in another PC at a later date, I then don't have to worry about having any problems. Also a quick tip, if you have this exact motherboard combo and you're using it, and you wanna get a little bit extra performance in the BIOS here, just hit delete upon booting up the PC and then click the right arrow to advance and then go down to CSM and enter and go into here and go to video, enter, change it to UEFI, and then press escape and go back up to PCI subsystem settings, quickly bang in above 4G decoding, as well as resizable bar support, press F10, save and exit. Now you've got potentially some extra performance. Anyhow, I'll put all the links in the description below for downloads, programs, all that good stuff. Let's go check out how this thing performs in some fun titles. So we just finished up a hot gaming session on this budget PC right here, and the results were actually pretty impressive. We will start off with Counter-Strike 2 free to play game, and we were managing to get a 4K image out on this PC, close to around 120 average FPS. Now keep in mind, I was using the Fidelity FX upscaling here, so I guess it's more or less kind of closer to a true 1440p image, but still, regardless, it's impressive to see that a 5700 XT can still get up and play at the higher resolutions with decent settings and at decent FPS. Now the CPU itself is kind of capping out here around 120 FPS in Counter-Strike 2, and the 0.1% lows aren't too bad to boot. So really doing a decent job in this game, and it's gonna give out certainly a playable experience. And then the next title we move on to here is Delta Force. This is a pretty popular free to play game as well, online multiplayer FPS title, just like Counter-Strike 2. And the FPS was actually pretty similar to Counter-Strike 2 in that we were playing a 4K upscaled image and we're on, I believe it was medium settings and we're getting close to again, around 120 average FPS with decent 0.1% lows given the price of this rig right here. Then the last title we decided to boot up was Borderlands 2 actually, you guys told us to check out Borderlands 2, you reckon it is a pretty enjoyable game and the graphics are really easy to run, especially compared to Borderlands 4, which that's uh, really difficult to run. And 
This one actually got 4K max settings and again, close to 120 average FPS. So doing a really good job of playing titles on just, I guess, choosing the resolution and settings that match what you want to play at in terms of FPS. And here I was managing to get 120 FPS across three pretty popular games. And so, yeah, ultimately I'm really happy with what you can do on a budget. Then with all that out of the way, the temperatures were pretty good on both the GPU and especially the CPU. That's only really using very minimal power in a lot of these games. That's the Xeon 2680v4, and then the GPU itself, the 5700 XT. That does burn a little bit of power, but it does do a really good job of getting pretty good FPS, especially since it's one of the few GPUs that you can just get online shipped to your door under $200 and it still performs well in 2025. And of course, it's still got ongoing driver support from AMD with the RDNA there, as opposed to say previous versions. And if we go to Nvidia's side, cards that are under $200, if we look at something like a 1080 Ti, that's actually coming out of driver support. So that will no longer be supported, even though I wish it was because it's still actually a really powerful card to this date. And it's got 11 gigabytes of VRAM, it's still actually more than the 5700 XT. But in terms of the 8 gigabytes of VRAM on this card, it's actually in Counter-Strike 2, we're getting close to utilizing all that 8 gigabytes. And it was causing a little bit of up and down with the card. So we did have to sort of play around with the settings to get it well comfortable under that 8 gigabytes. So it wasn't causing any issues. Anyhow, hope you guys enjoyed today's budget PC. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. Also, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to drop them down below. And with that aside, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon and possibly something value oriented, budget oriented. See you next time. Peace out for now. Bye.